Is this on? Good. Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome along to church this morning. <laughs> Fresh, my grandmother would say. <laughs> well, we should all warm up. Um, oh, well, okay. Bruce will be bringing us God's word uh, this morning. Um, we'll be continuing with the crying out theme. Um, so no, no more to say about that. We'll, we'll hear that later. Let's sing and try and warm ourselves up a little, yeah? <laughs> I'll hand you over to the band. Give us a minute. Oh, well, you can have a minute. We've had some announcements. We'll have announcements later. Here we go. All right, please stand. to read from Psalm 6, a psalm of David. Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am faint. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. My soul is in deep anguish. How long, Lord, how long? Turn, Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. Among the dead, no one proclaims your name. Who praises you from the grave? I am worn out from my groaning. All night long, I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. They fail because of all my foes. Away from me, all you who do evil, for the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies will be overwhelmed with shame and anguish. They will turn back and suddenly be put to shame. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, during the cooler months of the year, you cause many things to slow down and even hibernate. It's a time of repair and rejuvenation for many animals. Lord, let it be the same for us where we spend more time indoors, may we spend it as time with you. As we also need repair and rejuvenation through your word, Lord, we know that you are the giver of all things that we need and more. Lord, as we come here today, we know you are more ready to hear than we are to pray. Please open our eyes to see you. Help us to see your hand in the beauty of your creation to see your heart in our community here in St. Mary's and the communities where we live. Help us to see your face in everyone that we meet, Lord. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Lord, we confess through the past week we have stumbled, we have said and done things we shouldn't and even thought things that may have hurt and uh, others and offended you, Lord. We ask you to, to help us to live as those who call you Father should behave. Lord, we ask that you will enable us to live uh, for you during our time here in this world. And when our days are done, enable us to prepare us to go forth to live with you. We ask that nothing will separate us uh, from your great love. In Christ Jesus' name we pray, amen. Announcements inside our uh, roots and branches. Um, send them out on the email, and if you got a copy from the email, the um, the KCC one love for the women's one that that uh, has now ended. The early bird, sorry. So I've crossed it out on the one that uh, you might see in front of you today. But the early bird, uh, not the early bird, the. Uh, conference is still going ahead in August and if you're not registered you still can register uh, and if you need any help see Herma or Janet. Um, base camp is the same that's going ahead in August also. Um, no more early bird for that one that's what it says there but it is still possible to register if you need any assistance with that please let me know. Um, Committee of Management on Monday, 12th of June. Is it seven or five? Five. Five, five o'clock. Yeah, that's good. 
Sorry, I didn't change that either. And the ladies' afternoon tea is on the 17th of June at 10 a.m. So is it an afternoon or a morning tea? I put afternoon morning tea. <laughs> That's all right. I think I understood, but I didn't know. There might have been a cryptic reason there, so I put it in. Uh, so it's a morning afternoon tea, uh, which is for stock taking. You're going to stock take the, the donations uh, for the personal items that are being collected. And if you need to contact Ron Norman, that's his new address. Is that correct, Ron? I th yeah. Yeah, that's good. It's not on mine, but it is in yours. So that's good. Are there any other announcements we need to make? No? That's good. Well, let's continue. Um, it is kids' talk now, isn't it? Bruce. Bruce is going to the bathroom. Can we get the children to come down the front? <laughs> Sorry? All of them. that one, especially Jared. <laughs> okay, they're off to King's Kids. There was one thing um, I didn't mention in announcements that probably is worthy. Um, because the their fellowship are not here this morning. Um, or is it for morning tea? Not on that one. Um, Robin and Rebecca, I think it was. So they're not here. So at the end of the service that Ern is on, I don't know if somebody would be able to go out and make a pot of tea. Can't everybody go? Um, <laughs> well, we can all muck in together and, um, and sort out some morning tea for ourselves, I'm sure. Um, okay, now I'd like to invite, what are we doing after? It's not congregational prayer. Ron, you're doing that? Ron M. I got the M's and the N's mixed up. I'm sorry. Yeah. But they know. That's good. Yeah. Morning, everyone. Um, as usual, um, lots to pray about. Is anyone? I've got the list on here, and there's a couple of other things that I've I've been asked to pray about as well. Is anybody? Have any 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 further prayer requests? Yeah. Nick. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Any other prayer requests? No. Okay. All right. I know. Um. Actually. There's the requests in here. I, I look. I, I know, and God knows. Um, there's lots of um, lots of things we could be praying about. I mean, we'd, we'd never we'd never stop praying. But um, God knows. God knows. Even if we don't ask for congregational prayers or, or personal prayers, God knows um, what you know what we're struggling with, what's going on, and some things we want. You know, we don't want to. Sh we don't necessarily want to share with um, with each other, and that, that's fine. But um, it's just reassuring to know that God knows and he will answer um, in his time and his will will, will will be done. No matter what happens, his will will always be done. Um, we may not necessarily be happy with it, but it will be done. Um, let's, let's give thanks. Um, Father, we thank you that we come before you and that we can pray. Um, we know that you hear our prayers. We know that you, we know, that you know what's on our hearts. Um, we know that you've got it all worked out. And, and the outcome is assured, Father. But we, we bring these things before you as a congregation and we pray, pray to you as a congregation, Father. Uh, we do care about these things, we care about these people and we know that you will hear us um, and answer us. Father, we, um, we pray for um, Malingi and her son who is in hospital. Um, he's been hosp in hospital for eight weeks already and he's facing another 
eight weeks. We pray that you will heal him, um, deal with whatever issues he has, and please encourage and help Malini. Um, it's, it's very hard when we have a loved one who's going through um, suffering and sickness, Father. We bring him before you. And we pray, Father, for all, all of everyone in our church family who's suffering from, from sickness um, and or injury, and even those of us who are <laughs> up and about walking and talking, Father, we all have uh, frailties in our bodies, Father, that we have to deal with. Father, we, we pray for Greg as he continues his cancer treatment. Um, we pray that it will be really effective, um, that, he is, that he will be cured and is cured. We pray for strength and encouragement for Robin as she cares for Greg. And um, we know as men that often our wives um, can take our, our debilities and our sicknesses and problems. Um, it can affect them, I think, a lot of the time greater than it affects us because they, they tend to be more caring than what we are, Father. Um, Father, we, we pray for Brian's continued recovery. Uh, we pray that he'll get a really good prognosis, um, that any treatment he has to have will be really effective. Father, we pray for Paul Kakia. Um, he's already had one operation, but he's got to have, um, I think, an operation on his other kidney, and his uh, medical team are making plans for a future operation. We pray that that can go well, um, that, he can, that, that he can have um, full kidney function, Father, because his kidneys are not operating at, at 100% um, as they should. Please be with him. Father, we, um, we pray for um, Janet's father and um, mother, Nick's in-laws. We pray that he's in hospital, Father, he's had a stroke. Uh, we pray that, you will, um, that he'll get the medical attention that he needs, that you will alleviate and um, cure the effects of the stroke and that he can be restored um, to good health again, Father. Be with, be with all of them, Father, and encourage and strengthen them. Um, we pray, also pray for um, our grandson, River. He'll be having um, an operation on, his, on six of his teeth under anaesthesia, which he'll be having caps put on in early July. Uh, we pray that um, the production of enamel on his tooth will kick in, Father, and that um, that, that, that will work. Um, because you, you made our bodies, Father, with all those people we, we pray for. You made our bodies, and we pray that you'll just um, enable them to work. Um, the way that you designed them to do, but we break down. We pray, Father, for our youth group, um, that they'll be strengthened and grow in Christ, uh, that they can go into adulthood um, confident and have um, assurance and hope and belief in Jesus Christ so that they can navigate their way through this um, evil world, Father, which is becoming more dangerous um, by the day and Satan certainly out to get, get our youth. Father, we pray for the Sunday school, we pray for the teachers, uh, we pray that children can learn and grow in the knowledge of you and we pray that you'll um, send more families along, Father, from our local area, Father, so that they can hear of your word and learn about you. Uh, because we, we, I mean, we always need you, but we need you more than ever and the young people need you more than ever, Father, in, this, uh, in these end times. We bring all this before you, Father, and. Um, much more besides, but you know all about that. And we give you thanks and we pray and ask that you'll answer us. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Sorry about that. I forgot why I was sitting down there. <laughs> okay. Ron is now going to read the Bible reading for us. This is Ron N. I'm getting it better. And Bruce will uh, then bring us God's word this morning. I'm looking for Bruce. I can see him. Right. <laughs> Bruce is going to talk about it. <laughs> We're on. The reading this morning comes from uh, Psalm 86. That's uh, 923 in the Church Bible. Let's remember as we read it, this is God's infallible and inerrant word to us. Psalm 86.
Hear me, Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, Lord, for I put my trust in you. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. When I am in distress, I call to you because you answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, Lord. No deeds can compare with you. All the nations have made, you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. They will bring glory to your name. For you are great and do what uh, you do marvellous deeds. You alone are God. Teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you, Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the depths, from the realm of the dead. Arrogant foes are attacking me, O God. Ruthless people are trying to kill me. They have no regard for you, but you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Show your strength in behalf of your servant. Save me because I serve you, just as my mother did. Give me a sign of your goodness that my enemies may see it and be put to shame. For you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. This is the word of the Lord. Oh, good morning. I'm back. <laughs> As many of you know, I've been away. We've been away for uh, five weeks. Four of those was up in the Territory, visiting our, our daughter and grandkids. And the last week, we were down the other direction, down at Leeton, visiting the other grandkids. So I'm back. <laughs> Herma's not here today. She's not, not well. But um, thank you, Ron, for uh, bringing us God's Word. Now I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> Uh, uh, if you remember, last week uh, Ibrahim spoke to us about crying out to God, and that's that's what we're doing over the next um, today and the next couple of uh, weeks as well. Let's come before our Lord and let's pray. Thank you for giving us your word, a compass, a light, food, a sword, and we pray that this portion of your wor word. Uh, which you have caused to be recorded and preserved, would do good to us and help us to bring honour to you. Amen. 3rd of October, 1990. 32 years, 8 months and 11 days ago, I found myself in Westmead, Hospital's Intensive Care Unit. I was alive. Earlier in the day, I was fit and well in Ryleston, New South Wales, when I hit the ground rather hard, having crashed my hang glider, and I almost died. The Lord had more in store for me. When I regained consciousness, after many operations and things, I realised my situation. And I remember well, crying out to the Lord. More on that later. Which brings us today, for today's reading, it's Ron read out of Psalm 86. Now if you keep Psalm 86 open with you, I'm going to work through it. If we have a look at it, it's a, a prayer of David. Even though his name's not mentioned, oh, it does. It says a prayer of David under 86, but nowhere in the psalm it mentions his name, but though he is a servant. 
David, King David lived 3,000 years ago. This was written. Amazing, isn't it? A prayer of an individual for God's help. And why? He had enemies attacking. It's a poetic prayer. When you read it, you say, well, where's the poetry in this? But hey, it's all there. It's five stanzas. Starts with four verses, ends with four verses, and the other one's in the middle of threes. And, you know, it, and it is. And you'll see the first few are the same, similar to the last few, and this is the way they, they do their poetry. It's wonderful. He does not say his name, but as I mentioned in verse 2 and also verse 16, he says he's the Lord's servant. He is in need and he cries out to God in prayer. And Psalm 86 is the earnest, heartfelt cry of a man in a desperate situation. He holds fast to the God he knows for protection. Does that sound like you? Maybe we can learn a bit by looking at this psalm. Let's, let's go through the psalm. Let's read the first four verses again. Hear me, Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, Lord, for I put my trust in you. Wow. Verse 1. Poor. You think, hang on, David, if he was the king, he wouldn't be poor. But hang on. Poor, as the new NIV study Bible says, if you've got a study Bible, you can read exactly these words because I'm going to bring them up. And as often used in the Psalms, it is not necessarily one who has no possessions, but one who is and recognises that he is without resources to effect his own deliverance or secure his own life safety or well-being. That's what poor means. And so is dependent on God. So let's rephrase those first four verses. My God, hear me, answer me. I am your faithful servant. I am in desperate need. Have mercy on me and protect my life. That's what he's saying. I trust in you, Lord. I know you can do this. And let me rejoice. He is desperate, isn't he? And he calls to the Lord. David can't fix this. Only God can and he knows it. Let's read the next few verses. The next uh, stanza, 5 to 7. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call on you. Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. When I am in distress, I call to you because you answer me. Wow. Some virtues there of God, they're revealed in these four verses. That God is forgiving, he's good, he's abounding in love, and he answers prayer. In his need, David prays to the Lord because he is confident that out of his kindness and love, God answers prayer. As Nick read earlier on in Psalm 6, verse 4, another Psalm of David's, he says, Turn, Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. See, David knows that, that this is the God, a God of unfailing love that answers prayer. Let's read on. Verses 8 and 9. Among the gods... There is none like you, Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you've made will come and worship before you, Lord. They will bring glory to your name. In verse 10, for you, uh, for you are great and do marvellous deeds. You alone are God. 
Wow. There's David again, showing us his belief in his God, Yahweh. Verse 8. Let's look at verse 8. God's with a small g. <laughs> yeah, small g. Because there's no such real thing as God's. Just man-made ones and what can they do? Compared to the God with a capital G. Let's, you know, if you're quick enough, you can look back at Isaiah 44. But I'm going to read it out anyway. I love reading this. It, it's uh, Isaiah 44. <coughs> I just want you to, to, to grasp what, what uh, Isaiah is saying here. About the same sort of thing. This is what the Lord says. Israel's king and redeemer, the Lord Almighty. He says, I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there are no, there is no God. Who then is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and lay out before me what has happened since I established my ancient people and what is yet to come. Yes, let them foretell what will come. <laughs> Do not tremble, do not be afraid. Did I proclaim this and, pro and foretell it long ago? This is God speaking, isn't it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God beside me? No, there is no other rock. I know not one. <laughs> this is God talking. There is no other God. All who make idols are nothing, and the things they treasure are worthless. Those who would speak up for them are blind. They are ignorant to their own shame. Who shapes a god and casts an idol which can profit nothing? <laughs> People who do that will be put to shame. Such craftsmen are only human beings. Let them all come together and take their stand. They will be brought down to terror and shame. I tell you what, go home and read the rest of, of, um, of uh, Isaiah chapter 44 and get a laugh at what people do with idols. It's incredible. <laughs> there is only one God and we have his story, his story right here. Let's get back to Psalm 86. All the nations, verse 9. All the nations you have made, that is, all the nations. <laughs> and according to Romans 14, verse 11, all will bow the knee before him. Let's look at Revelation, chapter 7, 9 to 10. Revelation says, in Revelation, After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and they were holding palm branches in their hands and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. There you go. All nations, all nations will bow. We can pray to him, as he is the one, the true and only God, great in power. Let's continue reading anyway, verse 11 from Psalms. We're up to verse 11. Teach me your ways, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you. Lord my God, with all my heart, I will glorify your name forever, for great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the depths, from the realm of the dead. Wow. Steve Cole, none of us here probably know him, but um, he's writing in um, for an organisation, Bible.org. I had a look at their site. It's quite good. And what he has to say is, he says, in any trial, a teachable heart is essential. Okay? 
going through some troubled times, a teachable heart is essential. Ask God what you should be learning about him and about yourself in the difficult situation. Most of us instinctively pray for, what, quick deliverance. But David prays that he will learn God's ways so that he will walk in obedience to God's truth. Teach me. He says, he prays, that his loyalty will not be scattered and divided, but rather be united and single-minded. He wants to be wholly devoted to God. And the end result is that he will fear or reverence God's name. Teach me. Mm. Well, when in trouble, how often do we tell God what should happen? (laughs) And now, David says, teach me your ways. Or, Lord. There's Steve Cole. He goes on to say, David affirms he's trusting God. As we see in verse 2, he knows that God will answer him. Verse 7, his affirmation in verse 13 that God has delivered his soul from the realm of the dead. Well, that may be referring to a a past deliverance or it may be also to be a statement of faith about his present need for deliverance, viewing the future as if it's already accomplished. Either way, he knows God and God saves. Let's move on. Verse 14. Arrogant foes are attacking me, O God. Ruthless people are trying to kill me. They have no regard for you. I looked up some definitions. He says, they are so arrogant. Arrogant. Having or revealing an exaggerated self of one's own importance or abilities. (laughs) Ruthless, having or showing no pity or compassion for others. No regard, no attention to or concern for something. And in this case, it's God. Now compare those characteristics or features of the people attacking him. Compare that to verse 15 of God. 15. But you, Lord, are a compassionate And gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. (laughs) It's incredible, isn't it? This psalm shows that David knew the God to whom he was praying. Knowing God's attributes and and his promises gives us hope and and endurance in prayer. So we don't give up easily in praying. Yeah, we must know that he is compassionate and gracious and slow to anger and abounding in love. eh? Verse 15. So in his prayer, David basically pits the God, his God, the God, the only God, against his enemies and leaves the outcome to God. Let's read the last two verses, 16 and 17. 16. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Show your strength in behalf of your servant. Save me because I serve you just as my mother did. Give me a sign of your goodness that my enemies may see it and be put to shame. For you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. In many ways, verses 14 to 17 mirror 1 to 7. That's why it's like a poem. Start off like this, finish off like this. Same. Once again, we see that while David is crying out for help, he's confident in God and God's ability to save him. David is also hopeful that God will be praised as others see God's protection of him. So he's been protected from these people and people see that and go, praise God. David is also um, 
Yeah, he's, he, what David isn't saying, which sometimes you can read, oh, what? what's David saying there? He's not saying, because I serve you, you owe me to be saved. He's not saying that at all. This is a prayer for help from a very mature believer. David's understanding of God resulted in him taking a humble place of submission to his Lord. He's confident during his trial he, and, um, and he was strong because he knew how great and how loyal God is. Rather than exhibiting panic <laughs> in the face of danger, David demonstrates peace, confidence and even joy. Does that sound like you or me? Or do we run around like Mr Jones on Dad's Army? Don't panic, don't panic, don't panic. <laughs> Some of you younger ones probably know, know what I'm talking about, but anyway. Or do we say, I've got this under control. <laughs> Just leave it to me. <laughs> Which way do we sometimes go? Oh, okay. Although there are many lessons on prayer in this psalm, which could compromise another sermon series, <laughs> the main lesson is simple. Our great needs should drive us to pray to the great God who alone can deliver us. It sounds obvious to say that, well, if we have great needs, then we, sh that, we should, that should drive us to prayer. Sounds obvious, doesn't it? But the truth is, our pride quite often blinds us to how needy we really are. So that we rely, firstly, on ourselves or on other people or other, some other godless method to get us out of trouble. Finally, when nothing else has worked, we say, ha, we've done it all, we might as well pray. <laughs> the only thing left is to pray. That's our last resort. Well, John Bunyan, uh, I can't find the source, but he said, "How? Uh, sorry, you can do more than pray after you have prayed. <laughs> but you cannot do more than pray until you've prayed. <laughs> Prayer should be our first resort, not our last the main reason, I suppose, that people do not cry out to God to save them from their sins is that they don't see the great need uh, as of their sins, as sinners before the holy God. You know, we see ourselves as basically good. We can cope with this. You know? Sure, we know we're not perfect, you know, but, but we're not, we, we sometimes say, well, we're not, we aren't evil sinners, you know, we can't... We, we compare ourselves to terrorists and child molesters and think like that and think, oh, I'm okay. <laughs> Not seeing their desperate needs or our desperate needs, you know, we don't cry out to the God to save, to save us. But even once we are saved, we still fall into the same trap. We're oblivious to the power of the enemy who prowls around like a roaring lion seeking to devour. It's in 1 Peter 5, 8. We overlook the strong appeal of indwelling sin that lurks within us. Galatians 5, 17. We don't recognise our own selfishness which undermines our relationship in the family and in the church. And so we don't pray. So perhaps our first prayer should be God show me my great needs that only you can meet Herma and I listen to John North each morning um, while eating our cereal he is found on FM radio 103.2 at 6am but we listen to his podcast the 6am is a bit early for us these days <laughs> And then back in February this year, he had some words for us that I would like to share now on this topic. John says, 
This is quoting straight from his podcast. Sometimes life is too smooth. It's the challenges in life that throw us back into, onto God, isn't it? We need those times of personal inadequacy, those times when we don't have what it takes so that we remember how desperately we need God in our lives. And God will sometimes send us those times just to deepen our relationship with him. John goes on to say, when you know you need a power larger than yourself and that person is God, then you go to him. Sometimes in these circumstances we find uh, we can feel like God has abandoned us. We have a, a relationship breakdown or we lose our job or someone we love dies or disease takes hold and we ask, how could God possibly allow this to happen if he loves, if he loves me? Well, instead of calling out to God and running to him and clinging to him and digging deeper into his word at these times, the things that would make us stronger, we try to take control ourselves and steer our own lives and push God away. There is nothing more sure to sap your joy and contentment than becoming self-sufficient and push God away. John continues, Do you know, as someone has said, to place ourselves in range of God's choicest gifts, we have to walk with God, work with God, lean on God, cling to God, come to have the sense and feel of God, refer all things to God. Alan Redpath, English evangelist, not Ian North, uh, Ian Redpath, who's the Australian cricketer, not him, the evangelist guy, he said, the best place any Christian can ever be is to be totally destitute, and totally dependent upon God and know it. End of the quote from John North. Well, David was one such person. 32 years, 8 months and 11 days ago, I was in that place. I was flat on my back with 150 stitches. I could not move. I had two broken legs, two broken arms, a broken pelvis, spinal damage, cut from here to here to stop internal bleeding, barely able to talk and naked. And from my hospital bed, I cried out to God. I asked him, why am I here? What do you want me to do? Be a witness to me. I opened my eyes and there was a male nurse holding a tray and a staple remover. And as he took the staples out from here to here, I asked him, do you think Adam had a belly button? <laughs> and that started the conversation for the gospel. <laughs> I could go on, but I'll leave it there. I knew my time on earth was not finished. I have a great God to be praised, to be glorified and shared with. Amen. Let us pray. Let's pray together. Our gracious God, we thank you for this psalm. We pray that you would help many who are self-reliant to turn to you, that you would help many of your people to turn to you in prayer with humility, confidence 
and joy and new life and light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you. Um, well, before we get to that, the offering box is up the back there if we need to use that. Uh, let's give thanks for our offering. Um, Almighty God, we ask that you grant this offering be dedicated to your service and be used for your glory and the good of our church and people here in St. Mary's. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Bruce. Self reliance is the basis of my testimony. I used to think I was, or I used to think I was self-reliant, yes. Um, John North, we've got plenty to talk to Bruce about during morning tea. John North, I asked him once, I said, do you do that live at six o'clock in the morning? He said, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't have to get up at six o'clock. There's a podcast. You can listen to it anytime you like, just like John does. He goes in there at whatever time. So, um, but if you are on the road and you want to listen to it at six o'clock, it's, it's there. Let's say the grace together and go and share morning tea with each other. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Sorry, I forgot again. <laughs> we know it.